Praise the Lord. It's hard to believe. Another week went by already. Amen? Amen. And here we are, privileged to have another meeting together in the house of the Lord. And today I title this sermon as we welcome all our guests by way of internet and to the family of God. Amen? I title this, uh, Are You Ready? Amen. Are you ready? You already know where I'm going, aren't you? Or are you there yet? Another way to put it, are you there yet? Because some people are ready, some people are, aren't ready to meet the Lord. Some people are on their way, and they hope, hopefully they'll make it, amen, before He comes. But you know, sometimes we, we try to figure out, God, well, when's the rapture going to take place? And uh, how much more time do I have? And you know, uh, I meet people all the time, you talk to them today, and then you don't talk to them no more because they're gone. Death angel came and got them. So, you know, we don't need to worry so much about the rapture. That's going to take place in God's good timing. Amen? Although it could happen today. But the mo most important thing is that any one of us could be taken today. That's why we have to be ready. That's why we have to make sure we're, we're there already. Not trying to get there. You talk to people. Are you say, Well, I hope so. You know they're not saved. Are you say, I think I am. You know they're not saved. Because when you know, you know that you know that you know when you're saved. Amen? You would say humbly, yes. I know the Lord. I love Him. He's my Savior. You know, we'd have a testimony. So don't take for granted because people come to church that they're saved or even saved right. Amen? There's only one way to get saved. And that's the right way. Some people get religious. Some people are going to be sitting and being left behind. And they've been in church for years. Think about it. They've been in church for years. But their heart somehow got cold or indifferent. Or they, 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 they backslid. That's why the Bible talks. We're going to look at Scripture today about that. That God said He's married to the backslider. So that means people can backslide. Hello? Amen. People can backslide. You know, during the circumstances of life, attacks of the enemy. But what a, well, that has to be one of the most saddest things in this side of heaven. Is to once to know and taste of the good things of God Almighty and then backslide and be left behind. How horrible. What would they say when they meet the king? You used to be my Lord. You used to be my Savior. I, I, I loved you. I, I, I paid my tithes. I went to church. I never missed a meeting. And, and then something happened on the inside and my heart got cold, Lord. And I still went to church, but I... I was there in my body, but my heart wasn't there. Oh, man. It reminds me of the scripture in the book of Acts where Paul was talking to one of the kings. And after Paul preached the message, and the king says, Paul, thou hast almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost don't get it. Can you imagine missing heaven by that much? You might as well miss it by eternity. You missed it by eternity. Almost. Almost you persuaded me. It was so good. Oh, that, that word was so good. It was right on. But I ain't quite ready yet. I don't want to really surrender everything yet. I mean, I'm living among these heathens here and I'm king. Why would I give all that up for this God you're talking about that I can't even see? See, that's why it takes faith to be even be saved. You know, I've been, been many people in church and don't have faith. This word is almost like it's non-existent to them. But they hear it, but it goes in one ear and out the other. It never sinks down into their heart. You know what I mean? People sit in the pew week after week, don't have the faith to believe that they can be saved or healed or delivered. That is for someone else. But I got news for you. It's for whosoever will. Amen. Amen. For whosoever. God is not respecter of person. He's just looking for somebody that's serious about Him. And their commitment to Him. That's what the Lord is looking for. Amen. Amen. Now if you have your Bibles, uh, let's turn over to Matthew chapter 24. Do a little reading today. Chapter 24 starting with verse 36 and we'll go to verse uh, 42. Amen. But of that day and hour, talking about the Lord's return, knoweth no man, no, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
Now we know over the past, and not just just a few years ago, there was a, a man who was very popular. Uh, I won't mention names. I don't like to do that. But he was very popular on radio, and he had ra he owned radio stations all over the country and overseas. And very, but he but he abused the word. He misused the word, and he got people to actually believe in a date that Jesus was coming back not too long ago. And they put signs out. You might have seen them. Signs all over the place, all over the country. And a certain date that Jesus, it was May something, that Jesus is going to return. The rapture is going to take place. And people were asking me, this, Christians were asking, could this be? Could this be? I said, man, if you knew the Bible, you know it can't be. No man knows the day or the hour. We just read it. Not even Jesus. Only the Father. And all of a sudden... You know, people were starting to believe that until the day came and went and they were still here. No man knows the day or the hour. But now let's, you know, he also tells us about signs of the times. You might not know the day or the hour, but he'll give you the signs of the times, the seasons. And can I give you a little secret? This is the season. This is the time. Hallelujah. You're living in it. Glory be to God. It could be any time now. Verse 37. But as in the days of Noah, here's a hint. As in the days of Noah were, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah, that's his nickname, entered into the ark. Hmm. And that's just how it's going to be when the rapture takes place. Mm -hmm. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving a marriage, doing everything we do, going to work, you know, running your errands, doing all these kind of things. And then they didn't even realize it. They didn't believe his preaching. Noah's preaching, a preacher of righteousness, the Bible called him. And they didn't believe it. They wouldn't receive it. They rejected it, although they heard it. You see, but isn't it interesting how the Lord mentions this particular scripture way back from the beginning to now and he said as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the end days mm -hmm. and we're there we're there eating drinking marrying giving in marriage violence homosexuality same-sex marriage all the abortion and the list goes on mm -hmm. shame on this country shame on it hallelujah maybe that'll change after a while huh if not now, when Jesus comes back, when he rules with a rod of iron, and all his enemies become his footstool. Can I get a witness? Amen. Verse 39, and uh, know until, until the flood, they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Came and took them all away, killed them all. Except for Noah and his family, eight souls, the Bible says, were saved. Yep. That was it, out of all those millions of people. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. And that's how it's going to be in the rapture. There's billions of people on the earth, but only millions will probably be taken away. Mm -hmm. How sad. Verse 40, then shall listen to this carefully, because this is right here, right now. I'll just hope it ain't your house. And then shall be two in the field. And the one shall be taken and the other left behind. Jesus. Mm, two of them. In, the, in other words, you're going to be working side by side with a Christian mm -hmm. or a non-Christian. Hopefully you're the Christian and you're working with a non-Christian. Or you're visiting a non-Christian. You're talking to a non-Christian. Or you're witnessing to a non-Christian. They don't believe it. They won't receive it. And the rapture takes place. They're left behind. You're gone in a twinkling in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Two will be in the field, the Bible says. One will be taken, one will be left. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. Two will be in the bed. Come on. Other scripture says two will be in the bed. One will be taken, one will... That's the husband that didn't want to be saved. That's the wife that didn't want to hear nothing. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe it. They mocked it. They made fun of it. They laughed about it. Mm -hmm. And the wife or the husband would pray so earnestly for their, for their spouse, but nothing prevailed because they didn't want to hear of a hardened heart. Two will be in the bed, side by side, falling asleep. The next morning, can you walk, can you imagine the one waking up that ain't saved and reaching, let's say it's a husband, reaching for his wife. She must have went to the bathroom or something. 
Jesus. Yo, babe, where you at? Can you imagine? Just imagine it. Yo, babe, where you at? Then, then, little by little, when he realizes what might have taken place, mm -hmm. could everything now she's been telling me for years come to pass? Then he walks into the kitchen and sees the teapot boiling away. She would never did that before. What happened? She was making tea and she's not there. She must be in the bathroom. Maybe she forgot. Knocks on the door, opens the door. She's not there. Goes in the other room, checks everything out. Not there. And he turns the TV on and he sees this news flash. Millions missing. Mm, then it starts to hit him. Oh my God. Could this be that rapture she was talking, warning me about, begging me to come to church, begging me to be saved? And I laughed at her and mocked her. I said, nah, I got my own thing. I'm doing okay. Jesus. It's going to be a hundred times worse than that. Can you imagine that heart sinking? Ooh. Waking up to an empty bed, empty house. Let's move on. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other left. Watch, now here's a warning. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. We don't know the hour. We just know he's coming. And we were just warned to watch. Protect your salvation. Protect your soul at all costs. For the enemy's running to and fro like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And trust me, I know he's devouring plenty. There's people in church that ain't in church today that used to be faithful in church. Faithful in their living, faithful in their giving. They're no longer in church. The Bible says that the love of many hearts will grow wax cold. And in the last days, many shall depart from the faith. Don't be one of them. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord cometh. But know this, that if the good men of the house, amen, knew what watch the thief, that's the devil, would come, and what would he be watchful and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. See, if you're watching over your soul, if you're watching over how you're living, you, you, you'll be one step ahead of the enemy. Yeah. You won't allow him to come into the house, which is your soul, and destroy it and steal it and damn your soul to hell. Yeah. See, it sounds pretty hard, preacher. It is hard. 